talk. For those of you in the room right now, you're going to learn some good stuff when it comes to understanding credit card processing 101. And the thing with CoCard is we have, fortunately, people that have been in this business for many, many years, decades. I, I can see you in the room already. <laughs> I got in in 2000 when I got in with like some of you maybe, um, I knew nothing about credit card processing. Fortunately, my first show I went to, I, I, it was in Chicago, and I was just getting into the credit card game. I just sold my company, I needed to find a new business. And I, I run into this booth in Chicago, and there's a member that we have not here, her name is Elan. Uh, she was one of our best recruiters. She said, oh, you should join CoCard. Go, What's CoCard? Well, we formed this group. It had just started. There was six members, I think, and I was like the seventh member. I was like, well, that's just, that was great. I'll join because I know nothing about credit card. What a great tool that I can actually go to somebody, another member. So the first thing I did is I flew out to visit an office, John Stevens' office out in Boston was our number one. I would, my method of success is find out who's number one, figure out what they do, do exactly what they do, and lo and behold, you become successful too. So that was my model. And that's the beauty of code card. So for those of you that are newer to the credit card game, the, the beauty of this is we, we want to be able to increase the knowledge. And even with all that, it took me a year before I even heard the word interchange. I didn't know what interchange was. And I'd already set up, I think, a thousand merchants at that time. And I still didn't know what they were doing. I just said, I was doing a tiered pricing, which you're going to learn a little bit about today. But that being said, one of our uh, fortunate members, experts, is Richard, and uh, he's going to go through this with you, and uh, we're going to start off understanding as best we can without having our minds explode, interchange, and then I'm going to come up and, and, and present how I train a new rep who has no knowledge, how to go out there and read statements and do quotes and that sort of thing in a very short period of time. Today. But with that being said, Richard, thank you for your time. We're all volunteers here. Let's give Richard a hand. I feel obligated to take a moment here uh, to just thank Dan and Ray Rea and Jenny and Barb for putting on this great show for us this, uh, this week. So I think we show Okay. Looks good. Looks sharp. Carol says, is there anything else that I can 
get for you while you're here. He says, you can do some new underwear. How's this going? Size 36. He says, no, no, you're wrong. I'm wearing size 34. And I said, well, you can wear 34, but there's a chance they can strip your balls and give you terrible headaches. <laughs> Speak up. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay, so um, now we're going to start the exciting uh, story. Of so uh, just quick, just to let you know, I started this business almost 31 years ago. Interchange was one great. Statement analysis took two minutes. Okay. Sorry, you guys can't experience that, but you know, you walked in, the merchant was paying three percent, paying three percent, twenty cents a transaction. $10 a month. You were walking in and said, I'll give you 2%, <coughs> 8 cents a, uh, 15 cents a transaction, and $7.50 a month. In two minutes, to a penny you could figure out what the savings was. Today, not so simple. So that one interchange category became three, became five, became we're up to about 700 plus interchange categories. Okay. okay? Now, let's talk about exactly what is interchange. Before we do that, does everybody know what the basis for? I have to do people here. Everybody know what a basis point is? Don't be ashamed if you don't know. Anyone missing it? I'll, I'll throw it out there. So a basis point is pretty, pretty simple. It's one one hundred dollar percent. So one percent is one hundred basis points. Okay. So if you know that. We can talk basis points in here. <coughs> You'll understand that number better. Uh, so what is interchange? So interchange. What we call interchange or interchange pass-through is really a combination of interchange plus dues, fees, and assessments. So the interchange itself, those are the fees that are paid to the card issuers. So those, those banks issue the cards, they get the, they get the bulk of the transaction. They're taking the risk, they get the bulk of the reward. That's where interchange is. Dues, fees, and assessments are the fees that are paid to the card brands. These are the national and discover card Okay, so that's that one. Okay, um, and as you'll see later here, we have basically four different pricing models out there in the world today. That's pretty much the cost. We have the interchange pass and pretty straight forward. It's cost plus pricing. We have the cost of interchange, we have the cost of dues and assessments, and we're going to mark it up some point out, which is going to be our problem. Uh, tiered pricing. So, the, the describe the tiered pricing best. Uh, again, we went from that, that one interchange rate. To make it simplified for the merchants, they're just the same one rate, they decided to show them three rates. So they took the interchange categories and they just combined them in buckets. Okay. So to, to be a little to make that a little clearer, imagine you went to the supermarket yesterday and the supermarket looked normal. Thousands of items, all different prices. You go to the supermarket today, they have three aisles. $1 aisle, the $5 aisle, and the $10 aisle. So the can of tuna fish you bought yesterday for $6 is now in the $10 aisle. And that's where the tier pricing is now. So that was the model back then. You can make a lot of profit in there because and the tiers were not, even, were not even specific. You never knew what went into tier one, tier two, and tier three, or, or qualified, mid-qualified, and non-qualified. Those can be mixed up all different ways. So, so one company's Price tier pricing is different from another company's tier pricing. But nonetheless, it's pretty profitable. There's a lot of hidden profit in those, in those tiers. Now that's pretty much gone away today. Um, and there was also back then something called uh, ERR, or enhanced pillback, or differential in the fees world. So it's sort of like it's sort of like a hybrid between tier and, inter and uh, interchange capacity. So what and a little more a little more difficult to understand is the ERR rates, but Basically what they did was they give the, the qualified rate. So that qualified rate, whatever it may be, 165, let's say. So we give the qualified rate, and then what they say is, okay, anything that doesn't meet that bucket of qualified, and we'll set the qualified rate is a swipe credit card transaction. So we'll make that the qualified rate, that's a swipe transaction. Anything that's cheaper, like a debit card, we'll leave in that same bucket. 
So sort of like that tier, that qualified tier one. Everything else, though, we're going to just pass through the interchange itself. So whatever the interchange differential is, so let's say the differential between a rewards card and a regular card is, let's say, 30 basis points. So we have 30 basis points in our course, but we're going to mark that 30 basis points on another 50 basis points. So basically, the differential on that type of card, instead of 165, would be 80 basis points more than the base rate. So it's a little bit convoluted, but that's how the ERR works. Flat rate is what it says, flat rate. Something you see from Square, for example. Uh, and that could be with or without a, without a transaction. Okay? Okay, so the most important thing you're going to understand, and I'm sure you've seen it, the competition doesn't always play fair and has to be cost. And what do we mean by that? We have, we have people out here like North American Bank Card, they'll take the dues and assessments and mark them up. So we're maybe 13 basis points for these and dues and assessments. They're more, and they're, they're charging penalty points. Okay, it's a way to sneak an additional profit with, with, with the sales reps not knowing that. They look at they look at and say, oh, 90 points. These assessments are okay. If they don't if they don't if they don't know what's going on. They assume that's just a normal price. And then we have our other fringe people like Wells Fargo that charge their interchange clearing fee, or there's some other ones that use different names. And these are just bogus fees they throw in there that make it look like they're part of interchange or part of the dues and assessments, but they're really just additional profit status for those people. One of the worst cases is their misrepresentation of the commercial category codes. So uh, we've lost the tire store, for example. Some sales rep comes walk in, walks in and has to be classified as a gas station. So we're getting gas station rates. Uh, now, no, nothing that I suggest you do. These investors are starting to crank the price down on these type of uh, efforts to uh, lower rates. Um, and they also use uh, these really summarized statements to basically hide their markups. So what they do is they basically show you no information. So when, when someone else walks in, it's really just, it, it maybe it makes it much more difficult for you walking into that company to really analyze that statement. But we do, we do what we can do. Okay. okay. Let's talk about what actually why? Why do we have so many different interchanges? How do we get to 700 categories? What's the difference? What, what causes that happen? Well, uh, of course, different categories, each card brand has their own little interchange breakdown. They can't be the same. That would be collusion. That would be, that would be uh, uh, market fixing. And they don't want, they want to avoid that fear. So they all have their own different rates for interchange. The MCC code. Uh, so different industry codes have specific uh, inter uh, interchange categories and interchange fees. Okay, you see it's very important. How the card is processed, you know, whether you swipe the card, or you the card, or it's an e-commerce transaction, coming in where the customer keeps his own card in. Uh, and then how much data are we going to submit with that transaction? So it's not a swipe transaction, or if you can some swipe transactions, if the corporate card is going to prompt you to So depending on how much how much that information is correct, like a zip code or whatever, will have an effect on the interchange category of And also the size of the transaction. So <clears throat> we have a little difference between Visa and you know, Visa MasterCard and American Express. But Visa and MasterCard have these high, large transactions, they actually give the merchant a lower rate for transactions to get above certain, <clears throat> certain dollar values. American Express is just the opposite. I have a ticket, I have a transaction report you can Yeah. And these are spelled out by in these, in these worksheets. You'll see those breakdowns from the American Express into the national rates, the categories, and where they fall in. Okay, so, the, so now we're here. Why do we need to understand this? I mean, you guys can go out there and look at a statement and say, oh, well, these interchange, these interchange in 20, and I'm going to come in and just offer interchange in 10, and I'll get the ticket. Yeah, okay. Possible. You'll get some business that way. It's done. It's done all the time. There's a whole bunch of salespeople out there that have no idea what the change is, what it's about. They just look at a statement. They're looking for a number that they can make lower and hopefully get the business. And it works uh, 100% of the time. But if you really want to maximize your ability to get new deals, and that's what we want to do, if you want to know how, again, we can't, if we don't understand it, we really can't. 
effectively analyze the merchant state. But we do it, and we have the knowledge uh, to understand this, we can bring in new and very profitable business. That's what it's all about, right? Okay. So, Azure and, and so let me say this. If you think you've come to this course today, you get to understand it's your change, forget about it. You're not going to understand it for my 45 minutes. But what I do want to do is give you the tools which you have in these booklets to say, okay, now I see all these different things that are out there that I didn't realize were affected interchange that I can use to go out and get into business. But now I have to kind of do a little study. So I suggest that what you're going to do, I'm going to give you some tidbits here, but it's not everything. Uh, you need to look through this book, read through it, read through the interchange, listen to what it said, and say, oh yeah, Rich said this about that. But You'll find some new stuff in there too. That's what I did. So, you, so if you want to really understand this, you're going to read through this book a dozen times. You know, pick out the areas that you think have interest for you, and use those as a new business. Such as, there is special pricing for utilities. Okay, and MCC 4900. Water, gas, electric waste management. Where the price is actually 65 cents to a dollar fifty. That's it. That's the cost. No percentage. My uh, it has to be registered. There's some other, some other things involved to get this rate, but it's out there if you want to deal with utilities. The Visa CPS retail chip that applies to government, schools, insurance, subscriptions, fuel dealers, child care. And the benefit of that transaction by making sure that if you if you code the merchant correctly, and I can't tell you how many merchants I walk in, they're just not coded right. So they're not getting the benefit of these better interchange categories. So there, the rate is 1, 4, 3, and 5 cents, and that works for both swipe and key transactions. Because these type of, uh, of people or, or, or merchants do a lot of key interchange transactions. So if they're paying tier pricing or something else where they're getting hit for those key transactions at a higher rate, <coughs> true interchange doesn't get them on those parts. Those are not consumer parts. Corporate parts are different. But again, these type of businesses take Vast majority of consumers. What do they count, uh, classify fuel dealers? Is that a, like a gas station only? Or no. So a fuel dealer would be a, uh, an oil uh, delivery side. Okay. Fuel oil. Not merchant side or uh, consumer side. They don't deal to consumers, they deal to. No, they deal to consumers. If you have an oil tank, if you have an oil heat. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, we don't do that no more. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Gotcha. Gotcha. No, it does not fall under utility. It does not fall under utility. I thought it would. This doesn't all make sense, by the way. <laughs> so if you're looking for sense in this thing, you've got the wrong class. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, so that's a fuel dealer. Uh, charities, uh, an 83.98. Um, again, similar consumer car swipe. Uh, they're 135 to 5 cents. Master card is 2% 10 cents. Again, they're not always the same, so sometimes you have to look up if you're on a specific account, check the piece of these, check the password. They may not be. <clears throat> Hotels, car rentals, one five, four, and ten cents. Swipe the key again. Now, be careful about hotels and car rentals. You're not going to put in, put in a standard terminal and do that. You need a specific terminal that's going to that's going to add that's going to be uh, transmit specific data. Like folio numbers, uh, they just they 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 arrived, they they left. So there's a lot of additional information that goes in to qualify for that hotel and apartment. Uh, supermarkets, supermarkets are an interesting one as well. Again, be careful. <coughs> a deli is not a supermarket, although I've seen delis classified as supermarkets. Uh, so we use the, we use the three T's. Three T's, that's what I was taught how to tell if it's a supermarket or not. And that's tomatoes, tea bones, and toilet paper. Meaning, they need to sell produce, actually raw meats, you know, butcher meats, and paper meats. If they don't do that, they're not, they're not a supermarket. Uh, now, for all you POS dealers, uh, this is really important. The MCC code 5812 for restaurants, 13 for bars. 14 for QSRs and 54.99 for miscellaneous food stores or a deli. 
Now, this is kind of interesting with, uh, with these. So, restaurants and QSRs, the, the 5812 and 5814, they pay a higher rate on Visa rewards cards. Again, why? But on a, on a slight Visa rewards card, because they're a restaurant, class a restaurant, they pay the key, they pay the key enter rate on the rewards card. See, they pay rewards to a bar card. So, so if you walk in and you have a bar restaurant, and again, they need to be doing at least at least fifty percent alcohol. So they're doing at least exactly fifty percent alcohol by classifying them as a bar. That's considered a retail account. And They'll save their money on the on the CPS uh, or, or What's the basis point difference on those two? There. So you could you walk in a restaurant that has a high volume bar, you can look at their categories in a restaurant. You by switching them over to bar if they're over fifty percent, that's a thirty basis point savings on that card type. Right. And, and reward and card. On a reward card, which is the majority of the transactions are at a restaurant are probably rewards. Now, also the QSR, uh, I hate that classification. QSR, they really beat up a lot. So not only do they charge more on re on, on uh, rewards cards, but they kill you on the fan fee. That fan fee is one of the dues and assessments. And if you look at the back, if you look at your interchange reference guide. What does QSR stand for? Quick serve restaurant. Okay. I, I knew that, but I didn't know that for like about a year. <laughs> On page 96, the last page before that, on page 96 is, your, is the fan fee. Now, this should, this should, this, they put in the interchange, in the interchange chart, and it should have gone with the due student assessment, which is the first chart. But nonetheless, it is a uh, fee that goes to Visa. And for some nutty reason. Does anyone need readers? No. I'm selling off with that. So on a retail account, you have one location, you're paying two dollars a month on the fan. However, if you are a if you're a card not present or card not present or a QSR, and you want those two together, again, why I don't know, you fall into this other category, and if you're doing, let's say you're doing forty thousand dollars in a nice restaurant, you're doing forty thousand dollars a month in uh, visa cards, you're gonna pay instead of two dollars a month, you're gonna pay forty-five dollars. <coughs> <clears throat> and again, why that would be, we don't know. But they, that's what they do. So, again, these are just things to be aware of. Uh, that's why I say read through these and look at them, and, and you get, you'll get some insight that you didn't have. That's how I did. I have read through these things many times. Um, but that's our look at the restaurants and the bars and other issues. Question. Yeah. How can you tell by looking at a statement that the code is right? Sorry? How can you tell by looking at a statement if they're coded right? Good question. So the way, the way you do that is, you should look at the interchange categories themselves. Where are they falling? So if they're falling, if you say, hey, this one should be falling in CPS Retail 2 because it's a, it's a, uh, it's a school, but it's not. That's the kind of stuff that happens often in this stadium and thing by the process or the salespeople or whatever, just don't know that it's down there. So you, by understanding the MCC code, then you'll know what the interchange should have been, and if it's not that, then they won't last. So the MCC code is not on the actual statement itself? It's not on the No. And then is there a place where we can go to like, a list of the MCC statements? Right. Say, I'm glad you asked that. So if you look in this book, <laughs> so in the, uh, and, I, and what I like is the MCC codes, if you look at it, uh, under American Express, in the American Express section of this book, they have the MCC codes. They are starting at page 32. They have for retail, they have, and we're going to talk a little bit about MCC codes again. But there's a breakdown of MCC codes. When you, when you submit your app, you can submit the MCC code with that app, and you want that MCC code to be correct. And whatever 50% or more of the businesses, the MCC code should be. Right. So if it's a deli and about 50% of their business is, is retail out of the refrigerator stuff, they could be a grocery? Uh, they could be, yes, not a supermarket. Not a supermarket. So really, 
Yeah. But they could go on grocery interchange. Yeah, they could. I'm not sure if they classify grocery the same. But yes, if there was a separate classification for grocery. Yeah, grocery stores are 